Imagine, if you will, an insect so small, yet capable of causing havoc on a massive scale. Picture this. In the heartland of the American South, a sudden unexplained surge in tick-borne diseases has begun. From the bustling cities to the quiet rural corners, no one is safe from these minuscule predators. These ticks, small as they are, carry a slew of diseases that are impacting the population in ways we've never seen before. Severe fatigue, excruciating pain, even memory loss, these are just a few of the symptoms that thousands are now forced to endure. And the most peculiar part of it all, these ticks appeared almost overnight, as if by magic or perhaps by design. Communities are left in fear and confusion as they grapple with this strange, sudden outbreak. The question on everyone's mind, where did these ticks come from? But what if this sudden outbreak is not a natural occurrence? What if it's a carefully orchestrated event? Consider this. Genetically modified ticks released deliberately into the wild by the very institution meant to protect us. An unnerving concept, isn't it? Yet, there are those who staunchly believe this is not just a theory, but a chilling reality. Imagine the government, in a clandestine move, setting loose swarms of these genetically tweaked parasites. But why, you might ask? The conjectures vary. Some speculate it's a form of population control, a grim attempt to keep numbers in check. Others suggest it's the aftermath of a sinister experiment that spiralled out of control, an attempt to create a super tick, if you will, that ended up as a biological nightmare. Yet the question remains, what could possibly drive our protectors to turn into our tormentors? What could be so compelling that they would risk unleashing such a biological hazard? But how does one prove such a theory? What evidence exists? That, dear listeners, is what we will delve into next. A conspiracy theory is only as good as the evidence that supports it. So, what's the evidence here? Well, it's a fascinating mix of intrigue, science, and yes, a bit of mystery. The suddenness of this tick outbreak is unsettling, to say the least. One day, everything was normal, and the next? We're knee-deep in a tick invasion. Too quick, too sudden, it doesn't add up. Then, there are the whispers of connections to government labs. Rumors of secret experiments of nature being twisted for clandestine purposes. These ticks, they're not ordinary, they're stronger, more resilient, and they seem to be spreading faster than any tick species we've known. And let's not forget about their unusual characteristics. These ticks, they're different. They're not like anything we've seen before. They're too perfect, too efficient. It's as if they've been engineered, modified for a specific purpose. Yet, as compelling as this evidence might be, it's still circumstantial. It's not definitive proof. And so we are left with more questions than answers. Who benefits from this alleged release of genetically modified ticks? Is it a plot to control population growth or a sinister experiment gone wrong? Why would the government target the American South, a region known for its rich history and vibrant culture? As we delve deeper into this conspiracy theory, it becomes evident that there are far too many unanswered questions, too many loose ends that simply don't add up. The controversy surrounding this theory is as thick as the fog in a southern swamp, and it calls for a thorough investigation, a diligent pursuit of the truth. It is crucial that we question what we are told, that we scrutinize the information presented to us. Even the most absurd theories can hold a grain of truth, and it is our responsibility to separate fact from fiction. As we continue to seek the truth, remember this. Sometimes the smallest creatures can hide the biggest secrets.